John Robert Wood gracefully played and coached for his entire life. He shrouded himself in awards and achievement. John Wood mastered the game of basketball. Wooden was born in Hall, Indiana on October 10, 1914, however primary lived in Centerton. This is what John Wooden himself had to say about his youth. I grew up uh, at Centerton, about eight miles north of Martinsville, and we lived on a farm there. And But I think the person <clears throat> probably had most in influence on me uh, throughout were my mother and father, and particularly my father. He said, there's always time for play. That's uh, after the chores and the studies are done, of course. Growing up, John fell in love with the game of basketball. However, he saw one young star player as his inspiration. Living in Indiana during the time, the Franklin Wonder Five were all the rage. A group of five boys out of Franklin High School were running all over the competition. The team was coached by Ernest Grizz Wagner and went undefeated in their first season and ended with a 104-10 win-loss record after their first three years. In those three years, the team won the coveted state championship every single year. Wooden watched in awe as this high school team went on to take on the professional Detroit Omars and win, twice. The star of the group was Fuzzy Vandiver, who was Wooden's idol. Fuzzy was named one of the best players in the nation by the Chicago Tribune and received the All-State Player of the Year award three consecutive years. The Franklin Wonder Five went on to play at Franklin College and had success there. When Wooden was 14, his family moved to Martinsville, Indiana. There, Wooden led the high school team to the state championship finals three years in a row, winning twice. Also during his three years, Wooden was selected as the All-State Player of the Year. Only one other individual had done that before him, his idol, Fuzzy Vanderveer. His success and location were paramount to his fame as a player because small towns in Indiana held one thing above all else, basketball. Wooden's basketball career in high school was impressive, especially in the highly competitive state. Due to his success, Wooden was to attend the University of Purdue on a civil engineering degree. However, Wooden would later alter his decision and change it to an English major, which would affect his career choices in the future. In order to continue his career as a basketball player, Wooden played at Purdue. Wooden played under the legendary coach Ward Piggy Lambert. The Lord gave me quickness, and that was my, uh, my biggest asset I had and other things uh, that, 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 that the Lord didn't give you, you just have to work on. Nervously pacing the sidelines, Lambert's animated style of coaching demanded accuracy and cooperation from his team. The second year Wooden played, 1929, Lambert directed Purdue to an undefeated conference season, marking the first time the Boilermakers won a Big Ten title with an unblemished record. Wooden teammate Murphy helped Purdue win all ten of its Big Ten games, thus becoming only the second team in school history to go to that point undefeated. Two years later, Lambert secured his place in Purdue history when he directed the Boilermakers to a 17-1 season and the national championship. Purdue dominated its opposition in 1932, winning its 17 games by an average of more than 16 points. Wooden was named National Player of the Year, a Boilermaker honor that would be equaled 62 years later by Glenn Robinson. There is no dispute that Lambert was a fantastic coach, where in the span of the next eight seasons, Lambert's Boilermakers won five Big Ten championships. This shows how Wooden's presence didn't affect Lambert's coaching abilities and success. After graduating, due to his previous successes, Wooden received an offer to play for the Boston Celtics for $9,000, equivalent to around $100,000 today. He surprisingly turned it down, instead wishing to marry and teach English. He achieved this goal by teaching at Dayton High School in Kentucky. He also coached their high school basketball team. His first year at Dayton signified the only year Wooden would have a losing record as a coach, ending 6-11. After two years at Dayton, he left and returned to Indiana to coach and teach English at South Bend Central High School. He taught and coached there for nine years. South Bend knew whether I'd be a good English teacher or not. Uh, uh, they hoped from my background I could maybe be a pretty good basketball and baseball coach. I wanted to be the best English teacher. When World War II came about, Wooden left teaching to serve in the Navy. He saw no actual combat and returned home safely after the war. Upon his return, Wooden took a job teaching and coaching at Indiana State Teachers College. In his second year as coach, the team won the Indiana Intercollegiate Conference title and received an invitation to, what was at the time, the national tournament. However, Wooden refused to accept this invitation, silently rebelling against the NAIB's policy of banning African-American players. One of Wooden's team was an African-American named Clarence Walker. The following year, 1948, 
Wun was again invited to the national tournament, however this time, the policy had been changed, and Wun agreed to participate. His team made it all the way to the finals, but lost. This became the only championship a Wun team ever lost. That year, Clarence became the first African American to play in any postseason tournament game. After his playing career and early coaching career, it should be reflected that, while Wooden was a great man, growing up with the icons like his father and the Fuzzy Wonder Five, with coaches and players like Piggy Lambert and Clarence Walker, Wooden had plenty of help along the way. After senior, John Valley helped UCLA's win against Purdue in the 1969-70 season, John Wooden was awarded with his fifth national championship. This win propelled him to gain the NCAA Coach of the Year Award and the Sporting News Man of the Year Award in 1970. It also required him to begin looking for his next star player since Lou Alcinador also known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, had moved to the pros after the team's fourth national championship win. John Wooden was very meticulous when it came to his planning of practice and how he wanted his players to act and behave, and many who played for him agreed to these terms or they were kicked off the team. One of the biggest things he showed his players was how to, to tie their shoes properly. It was the th first thing on every practice list. In 1971, Bill Walton came to UCLA after an outstanding career in high school, with a high school record for field goals at 79%. He often challenged John Wooden when it came to practice and the way he was supposed to behave. He told me after his player of the year and national championship team went undefeated, I didn't have the right to tell him he had to wear his hair a little shorter and couldn't wear facial hair. And I said, you're correct, Bill, I don't have that right. I just have the right to determine who's going to play and we're going to miss you. In about 15 minutes, I'm not going to have you unless you go upstairs and get taken care of right away. He stood and looked at me. Finally, I said, 14 minutes. I'm out the door get on my bike and I ride as hard and as fast as I can and I race down into Westwood and jump in the barber chair and say just cut it all off and give me a plastic razor and a glass of water and I just rode right in and just dumped my bike right on the side of Polly Pavilion and went and stood in the back of the line and hoped that he wouldn't notice that I had missed the first five minutes of practice. End of the 1970-1971 season, John Wooden and his UCLA Bruins had won their seventh national title, which had marked five national titles in a row. With seven under his belt and three sophomores starting, including Walton, Wooden went into the 1972-73 season with confidence. During this season, Wooden's UCLA Bruins were dominating teams, averaging 95 points per game and only giving up an average of 64 points per game. This dom domination led them to Wooden's third undefeated 30-0 season and his eighth national championship, as well as increasing his national championship win streak to six in a row. At the beginning of the 1972-73 season, John Wooden suffered a heart attack but that didn't stop him from coaching his UCLA Bruins. The heart attack didn't phase Wooden or his players, and they went on to repeat last year's season at adding 9 and 7 to the numbers of national championships won and national championships consecutively won. On April 27, 1973, John Wooden was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He became the first person to be enshrined in the Hall of Fame as both a player and a coach. After seven consecutive years of bringing a national title to, the, to UCLA in an 88-game win streak, the Bruins fell short in the 1973-74 season after losing during the regular season to Notre Dame and finishing the season after a loss to, Nor to NC State in a consolation game win against Kansas to award them third place. The 
end of the season also marked the end of Bill Walton playing for the UCLA Bruins. Walton moved on to the NBA and played for the Portland Trailblazers, although he kept he always kept in touch with his former coach and friend. At the start of the 1974-75 season, Wooden was leading a team that didn't really have a one specific superstar, it was just one well-balanced team. After UCLA's victory over UofL in the Final Four game, Coach Wooden skipped the press conference and went straight to the locker room where he told his players that he was proud of all of them and that this next game, the National Championship game, would be his last and that after that he was going to retire from, U from being UCLA's head coach. In the 1974-75 season championship, UCLA beat Kentucky 92-85 and gave John Wooden his 10th national championship. Fifth birthday, friends, fans, and celebrities gathered to celebrate his career and say goodbye. After nearly 40 years in coaching, it was time for John and Nell to begin a new chapter together. In retirement, John and Nell were far from idle. Each summer, they continued their long tradition of holding several one-week basketball camps for young players. Nell wrote to Mary, so you see, he isn't retired. I say he's rewired. 